Alright, you lost that call yet again. Please do dial in and talk to Mr. Alan Yes, right we here. would like to talk to you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, right now, that's the plan of Atiku for the future, of the education. Yeah. Right now, there's a, there's a problem on ground with this ASU issue. Yeah. ASU is asking for some money. Fragment is saying no work, no pay. They will pay you your areas, but the one pay that you don't work for, they're <laughs> not going to pay you. The students are fed up, they don't want to go back to classes. What is the solution right now? What is Atiku going to do? If Atiku becomes president tomorrow, what will he do with ASU? To, be, to, to be honest, I mean, well, to, if I have to be honest, I'm not him. Mm. I'm not him, so I can't speak. I can't say his mind, exactly what he would do in that regard. But if I have a good idea of the man, then I know that, again, his thoughts will revolve around how do we solve this problem once and for all. He's not the kind of leader who kicks the can down the road. And if you remember, it was under the administration um, that you had a minister who brought up the idea of adopt a school where you know companies, um, corporate um, bodies could adopt schools be responsible for those schools, and then, um, you know, they get economic incentives, tax rebates, they get tax um, holidays, and so on and so forth. So knowing the man well, um, knowing, knowing the, the, um, the, the tripod on which his ideas stand, how do we get the private sector involved? Because, look, he doesn't want the, this. He believes the federal government is too big. The federal government has taken on too much um, that it cannot, it cannot, it cannot handle. You know, um, um, and, 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 and there's one example that um, I, I like to make, and then it was brought into reality recently. There's a road um, in Ekiti State, um, I think it's called the Luomoba, um, it's one road. It's a federal road, oh. okay, because it connects to, um, it runs uh, through, different through different towns, so it's a federal road. Now, the federal minister in charge of works, might never travel that road. He budgets for that road every year, oh. but he would never know whether the budget is implemented or not. Why should the federal government at the center dictate the condition of roads there? There's a secondary school in Ohafia, it's Federal Government College, Ohafia. The Minister of Education budgets for it every year, but the Minister of Education doesn't even know whether what she budgeted for louvers, or she budgeted for renovation, whether it's actually carried out. So you have a federal government that sits in Abuja and tries to stage manage. It doesn't happen anywhere. It doesn't happen anywhere. Banks. Banks allow managers. Regional managers. Regional managers to say, look. Branch managers. Yes, there's a branch manager. Look, you come up with innovation for your own place. You are not, Abuja is not going to be the one that dictates what your bank is doing in Delta State or what your bank is doing in Kano. Whatever, however you want to operate, operate in that way. The only entity in Nigeria that keeps on running this contraption is the political administrators. And it's because one man wants to sit in Abuja and say, look, I'm the president. And that's what's going on now with all the other candidates. You see, other candidates are talking about, when I become president, I will do this, I will do this. No, as long as we keep on running this model, as long as we keep on running this model, even if a Messiah comes down from heaven, he cannot succeed with this model. If a Messiah wants to succeed with this model, the first thing the Messiah would do is say, you know what? This is not how Nigeria was designed to run. I mean, when we had Lord Lugard, and I said a lot of people blame Lord Lugard and say, Lugard, why did you unite us? Why would the Lugard that united us did not join us, did not do us like this? Lugard had, he was governor general. He had a governor of the Northern Protectorate. He had a governor of the Southern Protectorate. And then he had an administrator of Lagos Colony. So Lugard will spend three months in Lagos, which was a colony, spend three months in the Southern Protectorate, spend three months in the Northern Protectorate, and spend three months on holiday in Britain. He could relax because he had people. But you know, now one man in Abuja wants to be the one to sign Jigawa, and it's because people want to be powerful. You know, I'm the president. You are the president, you want to determine what happens to the Federal Medical Center, do say. Mm. You, you can, it, your government is too far from the people. That's what's going on. And when I hear candidates talk about, oh, I will do this for Nigeria, I, will, I say, look, this is the wrong approach. The only person that gets this thing is Atuku Abubakar. And it's because Atuku Abubakar has been president before. It's easy for you to be governor of Lagos and say, there's a problem in Oshodi. And you say, oh, call Taju for me. Mm. And you say, oh, call this person for me. I don't want to mention their names. But you know, and, and you say, call this person, call that person. You can call two people and you settle it. Who, how will you call Boko Haram? 
in Sokoto. How? Where will you start from? So, you see, they are thinking what they are bringing, and I say this with all due respect to them, all of them are former governors. What they are bringing to the table is governor mentality to president's work, and it cannot work. Only Atiku Abubaka understands this thing, to be honest. Only Atiku Abubaka understands but, this country. But um, President Jonathan brought that mentality to, to, to presidents, and he was from your party. But, I mean, but eventually it didn't work, if we are going to be honest with ourselves. Um, now, it might, take us a, a, it might take us quite a while to wrap our heads around it, but the fact is this, look. If this is not the way this studio is designed to work, and I decide to convert it, look, this is not a bedroom. Okay, you can try to sleep here for a long while, but after a while, you're going to be having body pains because it's not what it was designed for. This is what it's designed for, this kind of interaction. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of money has gone into it. So Nigeria is not working because we are trying to get Nigeria to work in a way that Nigeria was not designed to work. And that's why you have so much clamor about issues like the Southeast presidency, for instance. The Southeasterner would not care who is president in Abuja, but for the fact that the president in Abuja determines what happens to the Southeasterner in his own place. Mm -hmm. If you devolve powers to, the, to, to, to those places, nobody would really focus on Abuja. Everybody says, so we cannot even generate electricity. The federal government is just trying to work on that, to generate electricity. Remove that entire value chain, privatize part of it, put it, we'll have electricity. Nobody runs the kind of structure we, runs in, we run in Nigeria. I mean, so, let me just hold you on that electricity yes. matter, because I'm still coming there. Since on which one? Since on which electricity one? matter, oh, electricity. Okay. <laughs> now, I mean, in, in, in um, around the, the Obasanjo regime, where Atiku was also vi vice president, they awarded about $16 billion worth of funds into electricity. <laughs> and yet, we're still in this comatose situation of power. I don't want to get Atiku, into that thing. <laughs> Atiku, as you have said, he also believes that, oh, okay, the, the government has too much in its hands. Power should be privatized. The government, in fact, I believe that government did it. PDP government privatized, you know, NEPA into PTN. Now it's into three different bodies. You know, you have distributors, the generators, and the transmitters. What will Atiku do differently? Considering that he has once spent $16 billion on power. To be fair, no, well, he didn't, technically. He was and, the government. And he to, can, be fair, he cannot, to be fair, to be fair to him, to be fair to him, you know, from what I know and from what we know about that government, Atiku was opposed to a lot of the parts of it. He felt that, look, before we do this, let's elevate it, but that's internal government issues. But the major problem that happened with that was that government did not follow through with the privatization. So what you have now is a situation where your discos are privatized, your Jenkos are privatized, but your transmission company is still being held onto by government. So someone is generating, someone is distributing, but the person transmitting, and that's where the problem always comes from. When PDP left, but, but is the problem is transmission. Yeah, the problem is our breakdown. Of power from transmission. Our breakdown. Our breakdown has always been in that transmission um, sector. When you hear the grid failure, right. it's always that. And when the Obasanjo administration was leaving, it had been handed over to Manitoba. You know, and but the idea was let's try Manitoba for five years, mm. and then some people came in and felt, look, Manitoba, we don't want you. We have people that can run this thing by ourselves. The last one that happened, it was trans. You know, somebody actually went to switch it off. You know, it was somebody a government staff that actually when the videos came out, he said well, they were going they, on they, strike. They protest, yes. That there was a they protest, protest that they yes, were on strike. Yes. So they went to switch off light. Can you imagine? We are somebody in Abuja, and that speaks to the problem that we have. Remove this thing from their hand. You can't let people, you will hear that, for instance, you can hear that your salary, perhaps as a negotiant, as somebody working in Lagos, but working in a federal government agency, your salary is waiting for the signature of one man in Abuja, one woman in Abuja, who's probably on vacation with her kids. Again, so I think those ideas are basically that. So look. you think that states should control their own power? Yes, absolutely. I think Abaka has said it. The entire electricity value chain. That entire value chain, should be in let's the hands have of the it, state. should be in the hands of the state if you have innovation. Because, I mean, every once in a while, you hear some governors talk about, oh, I wanted to, I wanted to, I wanted to generate 50 megawatts. I wanted to generate 150 megawatts. Hello, hello, good evening. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. What's the name, please? Yeah, can I join the program, please? Yes, guys, please go on. Please join the program, please. Yeah, can I join the program? Follow your TV set, follow your TV set, please. Thank you. Yes, um, Please turn down your TV set. All right. I guess we lost that call. So, I mean, so because power, power is also at the, it sits right at the, at the source of other things, manufacturing, 
you yes. know, how we, whether we produce, it's a major whether we're productive. Yes. You know, it, it's so expensive. And, and I mean, I think I'll buy that ideas. I think I'll buy is thinking as far as renewable energy. But let's harness solar, let's harness gas, let's harness coal. Hello, hello, good evening. Yeah, I put that in the middle so I guess you can hear me. All right, so what's your name, please? Hello, sir. Yeah, you can hear me now. I can hear you again. What's the name, sir? Okay, so yes, I, I just wanted to add to, my name is Suleiman, I'm calling from Abuja. Right. I just wanted to add to um, some of the things that Demona is talking about. Very, 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 very um, interesting what he's saying. I mean, you, you, we have to understand what the youth demography is, is, is facing at the moment, yeah? Young people hardly read up, hardly, hardly read up details to be able to, to understand uh, some of these issues that we're talking about. So, for example, in 2005, 2006, I was serving in, in Bayelsa then, in one place called Balawi. And I witnessed then when all of those money they are talking about doing of Basin Joe, there's a gas plant in Balawi. When you go to Omok in River State, there's a gas plant. And there are more than enough of these gas plants, electric gas plants, that have been built in the Niger Delta that a lot of young people don't know about. In fact, that's what's saving Nigeria now. Right? That's why you hear sometimes when there's no supply of gas, and the electricity comes down, and then what have you. Who knows about all of these details? I am a witness, I saw all of these things. So, I mean, are the young people really ready to go into the details and understand some of these things? So it will make them be able to have an informed decision regarding whatever it is. So yeah, the, the full world, the whole shout about this or that. For me, I think that's not it. And I like this program as able to build somebody who's critical to pull out these things. And they're happy. So young people will be able to dig deeper rather than pull out um, sensational messages or insult this or that. There are no details down there that could actually be able to help our um, decision making process. This is just the little I want to say, but it has to do more about young people really focusing on details, really mm -hmm. into the details, having more information about people, about um, what people have been able to uh, accomplish in their lives. I respect entrepreneurs a lot. I respect Atiku Abaka a lot. The fact that he's been able to manage businesses to success. I've been in the private sector for a long time. I know what it means to manage businesses and make them work. So all of these kind of details are very, very, very important. And please, I think we should do more of this so people can understand why they should be more critical about... Um, certainly, certainly. About, uh, Thank you very so much, Lemon. Thank point you point very point much. Point. Indeed, that's that's our objective on this on this program to bring out the details between the lines for you the know. youth. You know, critically assess yeah. these things and you know let us help. We need that school for you. We will now talk about it. I here. Didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to get into um, what he was talking about because you know when people talk about sixteen billion, mm. these projects that he's mentioning, gas plants were built all over the country. Yeah. You know, it's just that there was no continuity afterwards. Thank God he served somewhere that he saw one in Barangwe, in Bayelsa. Um, 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 they are all over. There was an Egni power plant. Events were, um, investments were made there. Gas power plants were built. But then you didn't have a follow through. And you see, it's one of the things that recommends Atiku Abubakar. In that, that government was supposed to be a continuation. You know, Atiku Abubakar was sort of mentored by Obasanjo to become president, to take over after him. But then politics came in, um, they both fell out. Atiku Abaka, they fell out and Atiku went to another party. Do you know and they so fell out? Nigeria ran. Well, it started way back in 2003. Obasanjo felt that, you know, he needed somebody who was more radical to be his vice. Um, and they began to mute the idea more of radical or more Obasanjo alone. More radical. Because, you see, Atiku Abubakar had sort of expended his um, credibility in the North on the matter of Sharia. He was a part of government, so he was coming out to say, look, what these guys are doing is political sharia. Let's stand against it. Let's stand against it. And because of that stand, you had a lot of radical, more radical Muslims coming up, likes of Muhammadu Buhari. So many of them. Shekharao, that was how Shekharao was able to take over Kano State. You know, where saying, oh, look, I'm the sharia governor. I can protect the interests of the north. And that was, those sentiments were what came up eventually. Hello, hello.